I gotta tell you, man, I'm just so disappointed. I just, I, I never thought it would come to this. And sorry, I have my camera off because I'm in my jammies. Um, but I just, I never, I never thought it would come to this. But I, you know, what this really shows us is that at the end of the day, once again, nobody is coming to save you. We can't rely on any politician or candidate to come and and save you which is why we started the rbn chapters which is why we all have chapters in our respective locations which is why we do mutual aid which is why we tried to explain this to people at the end of the day we're not i'm not saying that you can't vote but i am saying that shouldn't be your only hope and your only resort and i see sometimes people put too much stake and energy in electoral politics and in hoping that all I got to do is get this candidate in and that's going to save the day. And at the end of the day, that's not true. We do a lot of stuff on the local level, like all of us do. And then Rome goes across the country doing like tour for the poor. That's why it was kind of hurtful to me when I heard in this conversation, because that's not the whole video. It's a live stream. It was kind of hurtful for me when I heard in the conversation that it was basically saying like, get off the podcast and go actually join an organization and do something with people. Don't lie about it. I'm just, out. yeah, it, it's, it, I'm, I'm kind of tired of people pretending like we don't do organizing. We don't do mutual aid. We do those things. I'm just, I'm really kind of tired about that. And at this point, it's like, how can you not know? How can you not know? It's, I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't see Rome on Twitter talking about the library or showing a picture about the library or videos or something. So for me, it's just kind of like, what is this really about? So to say that, you know, we're not doing anything and we're just on podcasts, that's false. Like, that's that's a lie. So I don't know. I think some people just got like in their feelings or whatever, but this is really like a disappointment. And I will also say I have seen Jill go on multiple interviews. She was just on my show recently. She was on Katie Halper's show. She was on, uh, I want to say, uh, yeah, she was on Bad Faith. Anyway, she did a lot of interviews the past like week or so, right? Every time Jill was asked about Cornell leaving the Green Party, Jill Stein never once, never once threw him under the bus. Not once. And this really just like listening to this, like it really make me feel some kind of way. I'm just like, what is happening here? You know, I haven't watched the full live stream and I got most, a lot of some of the details from you, uh, Seb, because I know you watched a little more than I have. But what, why did he just out of the blue go after Jill? Like it was seemed so unneeded. It seemed like it didn't, it wasn't necessary to even bring up. It seems like punitive, like he brought it up because he m wanted to make sure. It was out there on video. Um, but what was your take on, on that? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I asked the same question. I know uh, Jordan Sheraton on Status Quo uh, also asked like the same question. Why did you leave the Green Party? Um, and this the statement that we that you just played that never came up. It was, you know, because of the bureaucracy. It was because of all the things that you have to do inside the party before you become the nominee. Like those are the things that were mentioned. So to see this and to hear that basically it sound like to me, it was more so about Jill and Peter. It's just kind of like, I don't know, man. I, I do know that. And I did talk to him about this on stream. I do know that Ralph Nader is also involved in this. And this was something that was said, you know, he mentioned in one of the interviews that Ralph Nader did ask him to leave the Green Party the moment he joined the Green Party. And during that discussion, I told Dr. West that Ralph Nader was just recently in an interview and he said that he would do everything that he could to help Joe Biden win because he didn't want us to get Trump again. And then after that interview, next thing you know, he tells Cornel West to leave the Green Party. So what is really going on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My brother JB, JB. go ahead JB. So I want, before, I want to, I, you know, I gotta hype my boy JB up because I feel like a lot of niggas don't understand who the fuck we have here right in front of us. Mm -hmm. We have JB Font, founder of the Orlando RBN chapter. JB Font, who is disabled, who does more than ninety nine percent of you motherfuckers out there, <laughs> despite the fact that he's disabled, despite the fact that. 
JB is disabled. He still got his own RB in mutual aid chapters. You have PMC academic scum like Dr. Cornel West that says JB Font don't do enough. <laughs> JB Font disabled his own mutual aid organization, but Dr. Cornell West says, "Get off, get off your podcast, JB, and do something. Do something, JB, and roll." <laughs> <laughs> what? And I want to ask you guys this question: Why do you guys think people had to lie about us like this? Why do you think that is? Go ahead, JB. Good to see everybody here. Uh, of course. Uh, Voltron has formed once again. Let's go. Let's but, go. Um, I, I, w- I want to first say that as somebody that's had a lot of respect in the past for Dr. Cornell West, in the past. this recent turn of events have been disappointing, to say the least. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And to allude to we are not on the ground doing the work to try to help build community and dual power is not only uh, offensive to someone like myself, but is also an insult to us. Um, we've been, it, it will be in April 1st, it'll be three years that RBN has been around. And since then, all of us have dove into and have done more than we ever have for our communities. And part of it, I would like to attribute as influence because people like Rome, right? Absolutely. And so because of that, we're doing the work and we're documenting that work And it feels lazy to make claims like this without actually going on to our YouTube page, without going on to our Twitter and seeing the work that we're doing and then making these claims that we're actually not doing work on the ground. Now, as many of you have many of you have already saw last night, I did an upload of what I put out on my channel uh, last week about the People's Free Kitchen and what they're doing here in Orlando, right? Why did I share that on RBN? Because I want People's Free Kitchen to get more eyes on them so that people will either donate or volunteer so that they can do more in the community here in Central Florida. It's the same thing with, for instance, what did Sappy do last last November, right? What did CJ just do back in December? What did Rome do in Jackson, Mississippi? What did Nick do last December? And, and, and also for the, the schools, right? For 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 school, right? For kids. Maybe. So the thing is, is that it's when, when you're not looking and then you make accusations, <laughs> it makes you look foolish. I would plead with Dr. West to retract those claims because the thing is, is that there are receipts that prove otherwise. And I don't think it will be in his best interest because the thing is, is right now you're unfortunately already digging yourself a hole right now. And it is not looking good for you. Um, And also, by the way, as someone who preached door to door for almost 20 years, and Tim Black, yes, I was also raised Jehovah's Witness too. How you doing? The thing about saying that you're a Christian and that you should have love for everybody and you know uh, and, and saying that you have uh, you you want to show mercy and kindness to the children of that gentleman I, I forget how to pronounce his name Fuck them kids. <laughs> Here's, here's, my, here's, here's my thing. Here's my thing. Just because you are a Christian does not mean that you have to eulogize someone that does something horrible. Like, for instance, we could just keep our mouth shut when it comes to people like that. And the problem isn't you mentioning them. 
but is mentioning them in conjunction with political prisoners that are not in the same vein as somebody like him. Now, are we going to say that we pray for the descendants of Hitler, right? Now, they, they're probably fine people, right? You know, they have probably have nothing to do with their great uncle or whoever he is. But why are we putting them in conjunction with someone maybe like a Nelson Mandela or Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or something like that? Doesn't that sound weird to you? And so just because you're Christian doesn't mean that you have to forego the or or take look away, not necessarily look away, but forego what other people have done who are reprehensible. I don't know. Maybe well, I maybe well, you know, you know, I'm an atheist and I, I have seen this before. Black Christians do the same thing when I say, hey, why do your God justify slavery? They do the same damn thing. And I'm going to take it back to Nick's question. Why do they lie? It's because they are hoping that their audience is dumb enough to not even look into it, just to believe. Just like how that post is up of him still uh, praising that fucking Nazi. He was hoping that we was dumb enough to fall for the CIA trap. But we have seen this before. And we said, no, we're not. we walked over it, you know, walked to the side of it. And now he's mad because we didn't fall in the fucking trap. And they have to lie on people like us. Because if you are arguing, if you're trying to uh, uh, delegitimize a motherfucker, tear a nigga down, you're not going to say, oh, yeah, I love what you do on the ground. I love all the people that you feed. I love all this and I love all that. You, you no, know, right. fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna <laughs> acknowledge you. Oh, CJ, and, uh, you know, like you ain't been in this nigga show five, six, seven times. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Man. Downplay that nigga. And this is this is the uh, this is the. It's always been the game plan. This is CIA handbook, man. And yeah, there, there was a, n- a- nothing has changed. My question to you guys, when you guys hear my criticism of Dr. Cornel West, name one thing I said about Dr. <laughs> Cornel West that was a lie. Where has, when have I ever criticized something that he did not say? No, I criticize him for him praising a white supremacist. We criticize him for leaving the Green Party. These are things that he has done undisputably. You can agree or disagree with our criticism all you want. You guys know this. You guys know this. The people who go after us, they always have to lie. And when they have to lie, I'm like, I get excited because I'm like, that's all you have then. You don't have a legitimate response to our criticism Mm -hmm. of you being weak on white supremacy, so you have to lie about us. It's the same thing Black Power Media did. Those old Negroes was upset because people was watching us more than them, despite the fact that they had degrees. So they had to lie about us. They didn't have a substantive criticism of us. That is what we explained in our breakdown video. They lied and said, we don't do activism. So fam, I'm asking everyone who's watching this stream, why are they lying about us? If they was like Rome, they're like, fuck Nick, he's a communist. You know what I mean? Fuck Rome, he's a communist. That's a legitimate criticism. Whether we think it's silly or not. Yeah. Why is RB out there saying we should do mutual aid instead of electoral politics? That's the criticism, whether we believe it's silly or not. You notice they never do that. You notice that the PLC class, like Dr. Cornel West, they always have to rely about lying about our activism. And I just want to ask you guys why you think that is. <laughs> it's not it's not even just the activism part. I get tired of the lies about we don't talk about reparations. Like I've had on Dr. Sandy Darity, I've had on Marcel Dixon, I've had on Camilla, who's from the California Reparations Task Force. I had on uh actually a group of people from Roxbury to talk about reparations. I just had on a we don't talk about black issues. I just had on um Abdul, uh, one of the black principals that has been fired from Chicago public schools. And that is a problem that's happening in Chicago where they are firing black male principals. So I just mentioned, talked about reparations. 
reparations today when I was talking about the discussion between Bree and Dean Phillips, how Dean tried to play himself as a victim as if he's more oppressed than a black woman. So I talked about all those things. And the thing that kills me is when they make these comments and say, we don't talk about reparations. We don't talk about black issues. Again, those are blatant lies. So again, like Nick said, you got to ask that question. Why are they making up those stories? Why are they lying about those things? It's not, it's not that we don't talk about, uh, you know, black issues or black things is that we, it, that's just not our whole thing. See, they have made, they have made it, their whole thing and now they have put a ceiling over them and now they see us we can reach people from china russia you know <laughs> like we are international especially how powerful we are with foreign policy and they like oh well you got a whole bunch of white people how do we even know that how do we even <laughs> know that because it's a it's a very diverse chat it's a very diverse following you know but they have to make it, they have to demonize and say, look, all these white people listening to you. But then again, you make yourself look like an ass because if we can sit here and have a, a, a majority white uh, uh, audience and have them agreeing with reparations, yeah, that, that there's the fucking that. problem here. <laughs> Do you guys have any idea? Me and Sabi were talking about this before. Do you guys have any, any idea how many white people told me and Sabi that we changed our mind about reparations? You know what I mean? They say, oh, the, the lazy criticism of black power media laid on us, but they say, oh, they got a white audience. For one, you can't even prove that. But even if that is true, you know how I many white people you got to support reparations? That's a positive. Who who, who are they flipping on these issues? They're flipping nobody. I, I got average, like, conservative redneck people saying, oh, man, I never heard, like, this the, the explanation of Marxism. I didn't know that Black Panther was a Marxist organization. I learned that on your stream. I learned about mutual aid on your stream. I learned about the <laughs> reparation argument on your stream. We are reaching people, and it makes them upset. Why would it make them upset that we are reaching them? And it's, it's not even, it's, and, and, and not even just that, but the other thing, too, about changing people's opinions, there was a guy who came on to call in, I think this was about a week ago, white guy from Alaska, and he said, he said, you changed my mind about reparations. He said, I didn't agree with it at first. He said, but it's been your commentary that actually got me to realize, no, black people are owed reparations. So why don't they talk about that, Nick? Never. Why don't they, when, when people want to talk about what RBN is saying or whatever, why don't you hear them say those talking points? Why don't they ever talk about the mutual aid that RBN is doing? I just wanted to add another point here when we talk about, you know, nobody talks about black issues. Um, how many people have been discussing about police shootings outside of the JB show on RBN? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because if, if I throw out some names out there, then you'll be like, well, I don't know who that is. But I covered a lot of it. So the thing is, is like, if you go down, like just go on the playlist tab and go to the JB show. It's way down there, but go ahead and look at what I covered. And the thing is that, that we do cover a lot of these issues. The thing is, is that you have to look for them. But they're there. They looking for they looking for a thumbnail. They're looking to see them on a thumbnail. Like, oh, the niggas got me on a thumbnail this week. But what it is, what it is, and I'm gonna say this and then I then I gotta get going. What it is is that it's it's it speaks to what we said to Black Power Media in the beginning when we first got here. We said there's groups that are good in media space, then there's groups and they're bad in person. They don't do any in-person stuff. Then there's groups that's great in person. And they're terrible online. I said, RBN is going to be the first where we're good on both. They don't like that. This is why they magically don't see stuff. Because we have the time to talk about foreign policy, to talk about substance, and also clown you. We yeah. have the time to do that. We have the people. We have the versatility to do that. So what exactly. they really mean is that they want us to spend all our time so that our time won't be spent on critiquing their terrible exactly. strategy, mm -hmm. their terrible position. They want, go do some more work in that area. Go do some more work over there in that area so you can stop talking about me. This is what this really is because they know we cover everything. 
they know we say all the time you have to look at all of our channels together because JB covers stuff that we don't we we sometimes intentionally we don't want to overlap stuff yes. we don't want to overdo stuff you you want to yep. you know if it's a hot topic of course everybody gonna touch it but some it's stuff it's like okay I check I literally check JB yep. covered a shooting oh okay I'm not gonna cover the shooting then yep. because he covered it. You have to watch all of our channels. And if it's not on the main channel, I noticed they'll be like, well, you guys don't do that. You guys don't do that. You know, I'm just like, what? Did you see JB's theory? Did you see this? Did you see Sabby out in Boston doing housing? Like, it's like you have to watch all of us together in order to get the full story. But I think they know that. Um, <laughs> JB, everybody. JB fucking fatigued. And, 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 and <laughs> Dr. West talking about all these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me, let me let me get out of here though. No. Let me get yeah, let me get out of here. Uh, everybody, thank thanks for uh everybody joining. Did not plan this, and it ended up being a, a great, great stream. No bickering where we with substance broke the shit down, and that's what Ajamu said they hate about us is that we have the substance, we have the receipts. We not because we got I'm gonna have the little funny little name for you. You get what I'm saying? I'm gonna call you Urkel. But then we're going to have receipt one, two, three, four. Example one, two, three. You get what I'm saying? And that's, it's like an overload. It's no way, it's no way, it's no way they they found to like get at us yet. 